Okay, so you've clicked on this video for one of two reasons. One, you've played a lot of DayZ and want to broaden your horizons. Or two, you haven't played DayZ, but you want to try something similar, either because you've heard some bad things about DayZ, or because you'd want to try something not as DayZ y as DayZ, if that makes any sense. No matter which reason you're here, I'm sure this video will help you guys figure out what is the best DayZ alternative for your specific needs. Now, I don't just want to talk about games that are bordering on DayZ clones, since we've seen a lot of them these past few years, and they're all pretty similar to one another. To combat that, I'm just going to touch on the two that I think have a decent amount of potential to grow and become their own thing outside of the DayZ sphere of influence, while still keeping that familiar tone we're used to. The first of which is Scum. Scum is the most different of these two. It predictably has the survival, crafting, and exploration that you'd expect from a DayZ type game, but with a few new features that separate it from the others. First off, the metabolism system is awesome. It makes looting food items feel so much better, even if it looks really complicated to new people at first. You really have to pay attention to the food you're stuffing into your face, because unlike DayZ, you can't live solely off of canned beans. In Scum, nutrition matters, and it makes looting food items feel much more interesting, since you're looking for a specific food to fulfill a specific need. I can see why some people might hate this system, but to me, it's a totally welcome addition. They also do a great job at expanding the PvE and looting of the genre. In addition to the classic zombies, which are called puppets in this game, that's due to lore reasons and we're not going to talk about it in this video. There's also mechs and drones, and holy crap, the mechs are so cool. Okay, just act natural. No, okay. They guard the higher tier loot zones and help slow down the progression so you aren't running the best gear in like the first 30 minutes. Come on, the grind is half of the fun. They also have added loot drops, which I like since it makes sense with the game's lore and gives players a specific place of interaction. And by interaction, you know I mean bullets and gunfights. Okay, now we need to talk about the big downside to this game. It's an early access. And it really does feel like an early access game. The performance isn't stellar, in fact, it's actually quite bad for me, and some of the game's features are just straight up grayed out and planned for later. But, I feel like this is a game with a lot of potential. The developers have put a lot of work into the game to make it more fun. Take the Deepwater update for example. It's pretty cool. They don't just seem like they're planning on scrapping the game and abandoning it anytime soon. Overall, I think Scum is a very similar game to DayZ, but with enough new stuff that it feels fresh and unique. I think it's a safe bet for anyone who already loves Daisy, but isn't looking to branch out too much. Personally, I do recommend it. It's a really solid game even with its shortcomings. But remember guys, do not buy a game based off of future potential. You should only buy an early access game if you like the state that the game is currently in, because promised features are noise as promised as we wish they'd be. And that goes for every game on the market, even if it isn't in early access. The next game on this list is yet another pretty similar to DayZ game, but not in the same ways that Scum is. That game is Deadside, another supposed DayZ killer. Deadside popped onto Steam in early access in April 2020. Now I have some mixed feelings on Deadside, it's a really divisive game for me. I love the elements and features that make it similar to DayZ, stuff like inventory management, looting, survival aspects, base building, and just the general feel of the game but it really just feels like a watered down DayZ at times. I would describe DayZ mainly as a survival game. The PvP and shooting come second, but for Deadside, it's totally flipped. It feels more like PvP and shooting are the main focus, while survival is a bit of an afterthought. Don't get me wrong, it's still a pretty solid game and does new things to make it feel new, like swapping zombies for AI military, giving missions, and adding safe zones, but it just isn't quite there for me yet. Deadside makes survival just a little too easy. For example, guns are really easy to find and kind of just ruin the fun of the grind. It's totally possible to clear all the AI out of an entire military base alone with nothing but a rusty shotgun, and suddenly, you're fully kitted in less than half an hour. The servers also just aren't that full in my experience, but your mileage may vary with that. 
I feel like I'm being a little bit too negative on Dead Side right now after I'm recommending it as a pretty good alternative to DayZ. So let's flip gears a little bit and start talking about the things that I like. First, the safe zones and missions are awesome. They give all the players a clear objective and also make it super easy to find other players to create groups with. In fact, that's probably my favorite thing about Dead Side. Making friends and chatting up strangers is a lot easier than it is in DayZ. I love the social aspect of these games and Deadside is just a lot better at it. Deadside also does a really good job at saving you time. I said it wasn't amazing a few seconds ago because it made the grind too quick, but if you think DayZ is a little slow, Deadside might be the perfect pace for you even if it is a little less detailed. And that really sums up Deadside. It's quicker and more socially oriented DayZ where you don't have to get bogged down by tons of small detailed features. Now, you might hate that or you might totally love it. Personally, if I don't have tons of time to play video games because either I have like work later that day or school, I'll play some Dead Side because I can grind up pretty easily and get the whole experience in a shorter amount of time. But it gets pretty boring after that, so if I have more time to play, I'm going to choose Daisy or Scum just for that longer grind. Okay, and that wraps up the pretty dang similar to Daisy section. <gasps> or does it? Pretty much, but there is another game I want to talk about real quick, and you might already know what it is if you paid attention to the thumbnail. Yep, it's Unturned. And since I don't want to spend tons of time on Unturned, even though it deserves it, I'm just going to keep this short and sweet for you guys so you can get the general idea. Unturned is basically just Daisy, but blocky. Yeah, but don't let that turn you off from the game. The gameplay is surprisingly really top quality, and there are tons of people who still love this game with all their hearts. If you like DayZ, seriously, just go try this game. It's fun, it's well worth your time, and it's free without crazy priced required DLCs. Okay, now we can actually move on to the more interesting games in my opinion. These are the ones that I think are much different from DayZ, but with a few familiar components. If you want to try something really different from DayZ, but without completely shifting the genre, these are the games that you're really going to want to look at. First off, Escape from Tarkov. I had to do it, the game is just too good, and I think that anyone who loves DayZ will totally love this game as well. That is if you don't already have it. So Escape from Tarkov is a hardcore tactical shooter with some survival elements. You spawn into the maps with a pre-prepped loadout that you prepared yourself, and you try to kill off other players and AI to get loot. To make it out with your loot, you must take it to a specific extraction zone and survive. Anything you lose in the raid stays there, unless it's insured and no one else takes it. Now, by this point, I bet you're already starting to see some of the pretty big differences. First off, no zombies, and it isn't a 24-7 open world like DayZ is. Let's start by talking about the lack of zombies. It really doesn't bother me at all. Zombies in DayZ really aren't that important to me, even though they are to some people, I'll acknowledge that. To me, they just serve as another layer of difficulty to make the gameplay a little more engaging in the beginning, but eventually they can just end up becoming nuisances in the late game. Having AI scavengers is way more fun in my opinion, since they're more of a threat and carry much better loot. This helps keep them from becoming just glorified target practice, since they're an actual threat at all times. No matter how godly you are at Tarkov, a scav can still take you down with a well placed shot. Tarkov also adds a bit more depth to their AI by implementing scav bosses who are very dangerous but carry really high level loot and are a unique challenge. This variation, although small, really livens up the game for me. Now about the lack of open worldliness. It's so worth it. Tarkov's maps are beautiful and always interesting. A big issue I had with DayZ's map was just how boring it could get. Was it more realistic? Yeah, for sure, but it wasn't more fun. I just love Tarkov's maps because they all feel very unique and they all have separate need to know knowledge. You won't go into interchange with the same gear as customs because they're largely different environments. Tarkov just does a great job of making all of its maps seem one of a kind and that variation makes them feel much more engaging. The last big difference that I think Tarkov has from DayZ is its quests. They allow you to have specific goals to work forward to and give you a very satisfying feeling of progression. Some of them are pretty stupid, I'll admit it, but a lot of them are actually pretty decent and a lot better than none at all, at least in my opinion. The quests also allow you to level up your traders and get access to new gear. 
keep in mind those are just the biggest differences I found. I'm certain there are hundreds more, but I don't want this video to be hours long. So let's hurry up and talk about the similarities. The most notable of which is probably just the look and vibe of the game. Both of these games take place in heavily wooded and abandoned Russian areas. For DayZ, it's Chernars, and for Tarkov, you guessed it, it's Tarkov. This really brings the DayZ vibe to mind for me. And you know what I'm talking about, the wind rustling through the bushes as you walk down a dilapidated road expecting a surprise attack at any moment, distant gunfire, and deadly silence. Both games provide this feeling really well, and it's really what intrigued me so much about Tarkov in the first place. Another huge similarity is the realistic elements to the gameplay. Things like healing, where a simple bandage won't do. In both of these games, there are complex healing processes, which makes PvP that much more dangerous. The inventory management also looks pretty heavily inspired by DayZ. Weight matters, item shapes matter, and picking and packing your ammo matters. Honestly, Tarkov is great, I love the game, and I barely scratched the surface on some of the awesome gameplay features they have, there's just so many. It takes all of my favorite parts of DayZ and condenses them all into less than an hour long raids, but it does differ a lot from DayZ, so it might not be a great alternative for everyone. If you're really big on DayZ roleplaying, for example, you'll find none of that here. There's no voice chat and there's no text chat. 99.9% .9 of the time, every interaction is going to be kill on sight. There's also no community servers. It's all just matchmaking done by Battlestate games. So sorry modding community, you might not like this. <laughs> Tarkov is great, but just make sure that it fits the kind of playstyle you'd like. You can actually check out my What Even Is Tarkov video right up there if you want to learn more. Be easy on me with this video, it was only my third upload. Alright, and now we've made it to the last DayZ alternative. Tarkov did a great job of keeping the DayZ atmosphere with its setting and realistic features, but this next game excels and retains the base building, social, and open world features, although it's possibly one of the most toxic games I've ever played. This game is Rust. And hear me out before you go grabbing your pitchforks. So Rust is an open world survival shooter. You spawn naked on a procedurally generated map and your goal is to loot up and build a base to protect your loot from other players. You can get loot from the monuments, barrels, and killing those other players. Now I know that Rust is really different from DayZ, so let's talk about that before we get to the similarities. First of all, Rust is heavily, heavily, heavily PvP focused, while DayZ isn't. Nearly every time you go outside, you'll see a player, if you're playing a well-populated server that is. And often, they'll try to kill you even if they only have a rock. PvP is a large part of this game and so is base rating. I know that DayZ has base rating, but Rust has it on a whole other scale. DayZ is more realistic with the way you raid, while Rust is... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of explosions. Rust also has a much heavier focus on base building and crafting. You really need to farm materials like wood, stone, and metal. Some people's bases can get super huge in this game, and base rating is really the whole goal of the weekly wipes. Another huge difference is that you can never leave the server. When you log out, your character just goes to sleep right where you left and stays there until you log back on. Your gear is always vulnerable to some degree, which makes this game difficult to play if you have a life. That was a joke. It's, it's, it's doable. The PvP also diminishes a lot of the realism you might be used to from DayZ. Healing in Rust is basically just slap a bandage on it or pop a med syringe and you're totally good to go. Crafting is a bit dumbed down as well. When you do craft things, they just craft in the background, there's no animation for it, so keep that in mind. Also, inventory management really isn't a thing in this game, so don't worry about that, everything just takes up one spot. Also, no zombies, but they were a thing in the early days. I feel like Rust was at least a little bit inspired from DayZ. Right now, Rust's AI consists of animals and scientists that guard the higher tier loot zones, kind of like the mechs from Scum. So not quite zombies, but there's enough AI that can take out the fresh spawns. Okay, now to the similarities since there are just as many. First off, the open world. It's a lot smaller than Chernaris, but that's to help increase player interaction. The open world reminds me of DayZ's on steroids, since it's filled to the brim with points of interest, bases, and other players, so you end up walking around a lot. And it's all very condensed because remember, the map is smaller than Chernaris. 
But unlike Deadside and Tarkov, this game actually has vehicles. They have cars and helicopters to help you traverse this map, so that's pretty cool. The gear fear we've learned to love from Daisy has also made an appearance here since you can lose everything in an instant to a naked with a homemade blunderbuss. We call it Neoka Pistol, which can be a bit annoying, especially when it's a 12 year old who proceeds to call you racist slurs. And that's a bit of a big downside for this game. While you do get a lot of player interaction and roleplay-esque scenarios like slaving for a large team, trap bases, and just chatting up some friendly players, you also get a ton of toxicity. But with that being said, a lot of player interaction plays out similar to DayZ. You never know if they're going to kill you on site or maybe team up with you and become good friends, so it's always worth a shot. Honestly, if you liked the PvP of DayZ, but you don't really want to give up the open world and player interaction, Rust might be the perfect game for you to look at. The PvP is always dialed up to 11 since it's near constant. Seriously, like I said, players show up all the time. But if you like the feeling of lonely survival, this might not be the game for you. Personally, I love Rust and I totally think it's worth a try, especially if you're on console since this game and Unturned are the only of these alternatives that are actually on consoles. And Unturned is not free on consoles, it's actually $24.99. So, I'm sorry to all you guys on your Xbox and Playstations, you're getting the short end of the stick here. Alright, and that should just about wrap up this list. I hope it helped you guys. Let me know if it did in the comments and uh, keep being awesome. We're going to talk about some channel updates now. So, for a lot of you, this probably isn't your thing. You can, you can click off now. Thanks for sticking around. Okay, so now for you super involved people, let's just talk about the channel a little bit. Uh, big thing out of the way, I was gone for a really long time. That was just me trying to figure out school and work balance. It was pretty annoying, but now we should be back on track. Video every week, Mondays at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. So keep an eye out for those. Also, if you wanna know more about it, join the Discord. I have a few people in there right now. We like to talk a lot and we like to play games together. We're gonna start doing that more often. It's awesome, you guys are a great community and we're at 700 subscribers now, which is bonkers. That happened a lot while I was gone. Uh, the Is Daisy Worth Buying in 2021 video popped off during the Daisy sale. It's probably close to 50,000 views right now, maybe over, which is blowing my mind. I never thought I could ever make a video with that many views. So thanks for all the support, guys. You're awesome. If you came from that video, welcome to the channel. Uh, I hope we're fun. So yeah, let's keep growing this thing. You guys are awesome. Thanks for the support. I'll see you later. Oh, wait, what did I, what did I say before? Stay safe, be happy, something like that. Stay safe, be happy. See ya.